Let's now define the basic securities, stocks and bonds, and also introduce the first derivative security, a very simple one, so-called forward contracts. Uh, so let's go and uh, do that in the next uh, few slides. This is a graph uh, fr from, from uh, the book I wrote with uh, Professor Fernando Zapatero on this topic. Uh, and it's a, mm, it's a possible classification of financial instruments uh, that are tra traded in, the, in markets. Uh, and um, we call them securities and contracts. Uh, by contracts meaning things like options, uh, and by securities meaning basic securities, uh, which would uh, be uh, either fixed income or equities. Now, in finance, many many of these um, many notions have more than one name. So, by fixed by equities, we really just mean stocks. Uh, and by fixed income, we mostly mean bonds, but also things like your bank accounts uh, or uh, mortgage loan, any kind of loans. So any kind of uh, any kind of income, which uh, any kind of payoffs, uh, which uh, have uh, fixed amounts to be paid in the future. Um, so those are going to be the basic securities. But what we are really interested in, the, in this course is. Deri securities which are based on the basic securities, whose value is derived from the basic securities, so, so that's why these are called derivatives, from being derived from basic securities. Nothing to do with mathematical derivatives. Uh, hopefully, we are not going to be confused with the two meanings. Uh, so, or in general, any kind of contract that you write with, uh, with somebody else in terms of who is going to pay whom, how much, and when. Okay? So, we, we have here several uh, basic derivatives and contracts. Uh, let me actually start here with uh, the simplest ones are, are going to be forwards and kind of the market version of forwards, uh, so-called uh, future contracts. Uh, simplest in the sense they are going to be basically linear functions of the basic securities. We will see in what sense. Uh, similarly, swaps. Uh, are also linear functions of the basic securities. The swaps are really going to be nothing else but a sequence of, of forward contracts or futures contracts. Um, then options, uh, which are going to be nonlinear transformations of, of the value of the basic securities. Um, and I put here two different classifications, calls and puts which are the basic options, so-called vanilla options. They are really fundamental options. Uh, and then everything else is called exotic options, uh, even though it doesn't have to be that exotic. Uh, it's just that they are not calls and puts. Uh, and finally, and this is something we are not going to uh, do much in this course, a little bit, uh, credit, credit risk derivatives. Um, so these are these are securities uh, which uh, whose payoff depend on whether uh, whether a company or a loan or a mortgage goes default or not. So uh, whether it stops paying its promised payments. Uh, th this is something which is very prevalent in today's markets. It was uh, also a big played a big role in the crisis of 2008. Uh, and, but we are only going really to, to talk about uh, very, very, very basic things uh, about credit risk derivatives. Very briefly, uh, just to, to, to define stocks in a, in a very broad way. Uh, so companies, when they want to raise money for new investments uh, into new research and development, uh, there, are, there are many ways, but two basic ways of doing that are uh, issuing stocks and issuing bonds. Uh, and uh, so stocks are really uh, shares uh, of ownership in a company. Okay? When you buy a company's stock, uh, it's uh, buying a piece of ownership of the company. Uh, and uh, in terms of their characteristics, uh, you know the price today. You can just read it online or in a newspaper. Uh, what you don't know is what is the price going to be in the, in the future. Um, there is also, most of the time, I'm not going to be, I'm going to assume that the dividends are zero, but in reality, uh, most stocks pay dividends. So if the company is doing well, or what, whatever other reasons there are, uh, the, the uh, management of the company may decide to pay uh, some of the profits 
to the shareholders uh, through through dividends on the stock. And, and we are going to look at, uh, for example, Black Shores formula for a call option uh, when there are dividends on the stock. All right, so that's what the stocks are. Uh, it's just uh, shares of ownership in, in, in the company. And then the other uh, basic security is bonds. Uh, uh, as I said, this, this is also a way for a company to raise money. This is like a loan. Okay? A company promise or government uh, can promise to pay you $100 as, as a payoff of a bond, uh, let's say six months from now, uh, and you have to pay something for that today. Uh, and uh, with bonds, you again, you know the price today. It's just the market price that you uh, see uh, in the market uh, online or whatever. Uh, you do know at some point in the future, uh, at some times in the future, what the payoff will be. For example, you do know that at maturity, which is let's say six months, you will get $100. And maybe there will also be payments called coupons uh, in between, which are also going to be known exactly when they're supposed to be pay, paid and how much. Okay? What you don't know is in between, like you know, if I bu buy a US Treasury six month $100 bond today uh, for 90 something dollars, uh, I don't know how much it's gonna cost tomorrow uh, or how much I will be able to sell it for tomorrow or two days uh, from today, three days from today, and so on. So there is no risk if I wait until the end. At the end, I will get my $100 uh, if there is no default risk. Uh, but uh, there is risk if I have to sell that bond or if I want to sell that bond before maturity, then I don't know what the price will be. Okay? So th there is that similar to a stock in between, there is gonna be a randomness of, of a bond price. Um, so some uh, terminology here. The, the final payoff at maturity, as I said, many things have uh, more names in finance. Uh, the final pay payoff is $100 that you get at maturity. is called the face value, the nominal value, or the principal of a bond. Uh, intermediate payoffs, if there are any intermediate payoffs, are called coupons. Uh, and uh, so I said, you know that these things will be paid, coupons and, and, and the final payoff, the face value, but you know that's gonna be paid if the party from which you are buying the bond does not go default. Okay? But if there is credit risk, okay, for US government, mostly uh, it's assumed that there is no credit risk, so those are called uh, default-free uh, bonds. But uh, most, most bonds so from different companies or governments uh, are exposed to default or credit risk in the sense that the company may not, may go bankrupt or for whatever reasons may not be able to pay uh, what it promised in terms of, of the bonds. Uh, same for, a gov for government bonds, so that uh, a country may not be, and it has happened, that the country cannot pay uh, payoffs on the bonds they issued. All right, so we defined the basic securities. Let's talk about securities which are uh, derived from basic securities or, or derivatives. So derivatives, they will, uh, so there are two, you know, there is uh, two parties, uh, a seller and a buyer of an option or a derivative in general. And uh, there might be a, a value that uh, the buyer has to pay to the seller uh, uh, either at the beginning or at the end of the contract. Uh, and uh, if, it's, uh, if it's an option price at the beginning of the contract, it has three names, uh, option price or option value or option premium. Premium comes like from insurance language because we will see that one of the roles that options play is really insurance. Um, and uh, as I said before, the future value is going to be derived from the value of the basic underlying securities, or it's sometimes just called underlying. Uh, for example, it can be an option on a stock, then the stock is an underlying. Uh, and and it's, it's simply in a mathematical terms, it's just going to be a function of the value of a stock or value of an interest rate or, or something else that the option is written on. In terms of trading, uh, derivatives may be traded in two different ways. In a standardized way at, uh, at uh, derivative or option exchanges. Uh, in, those, in that case, uh, the, these contracts are very standardized. Uh, um, there are strict rules how they can be written, uh, what is paid at what time. Uh, and there's basically no credit risk because the exchange guarantees 
and that you will get your payments, promised payments. Uh, but then they can also be traded over the counter or OTC uh, uh, privately between different uh, dealers and institutions uh, who find each other in a network of, of, of trading networks, uh, in which case they can basically write any contract they want between themselves, so they can be somewhat non-standard. And there is also then uh, more credit risk uh, because your counterparty may not be able to pay what they promised in the contract to pay you. So, a natural question is, why do we have derivatives? Why did people invent the derivatives? And there are several reasons uh, uh, that might be offered uh, as an explanation. Uh, the primary reason really is to manage, uh, help manage and hedge risk or transfer risk between one party to another party. Um, we, will, we will see that, and I mentioned already, that, that an option is kind of a nonlinear function uh, on, a, on a, a stock, for example. Uh, so, by trading, you, you can, it's not easy to get, by just trading cash and stock, it's not easy to get something which is a nonlinear function of the stock. And you, you have to do very complicated trading to do something like that. We will talk about this uh, a little bit later on. Uh, but uh, uh, we, if you already have that uh, sold and traded as an option, then it's much easier. Okay? So it, it makes some payoffs which would be hard to obtain by trading basic securities are easy to obtain by trading uh, options or derivatives. Okay? But once you have something uh, uh, traded in the market, uh, maybe for the reasons of hedging risk or risk management, uh, there, there is always going to be a, a traders who are there to try to make profits and s simply speculate on whether the price of a derivative is going to go up and, and down. Okay? So that would be speculation reasons uh, for trading derivatives. Uh, related to that so-called arbitrage profit, uh, th this would be a profit that you are kind of almost certain to make uh, uh, if you think that there is an opportunity like that. Uh, we will see also examples uh, in, in that how you can use derivatives to exchange one type of payoff for another. Uh, yes, like swaps will be a typical example uh, when you exchange fixed known uh, series of payments for uh, random uh, payments. Okay, I'll talk about that uh, very soon. And there is also uh, another reason, uh, which is uh, with derivatives you have much more flexibility to do different things. In particular, uh, you can also use derivatives to kind of uh, uh, do things legally uh, which you could not do legally just, let's say, with stocks and bonds, uh, to circumvent regulations. Okay? If you have uh, government or banking regulations um, that, that are putting some constraints on your, on your bank or your business, um, there are sometimes derivatives with which you can use and kind of do things uh, which are still according to the rules, but which you couldn't do without, without derivatives. Okay. So that's, that's still another reason.